In this lecture, I want to go over the different question formats you are likely to encounter on the exam. As mentioned earlier in the course introduction, the questions are a multiple choice format. On top of that, there are three other formats that you're likely to see. Those include a simple question and answer, a scenario-based question, and case study questions. So I have examples of each of those three types that I've taken from my practice questions that I provide as part of the course. So we will look at those and then we will conclude with a note on my 400 plus practice questions that you'll see throughout the course. So again, the questions that you're going to see on the exam are multiple choice. There will be a question that is likely to follow some scenario, and we'll look at exactly what an example of that looks like in a moment, followed by four answers from which you will choose the one correct answer. Typically, for those four answers, there are two that are going to be clearly wrong. Granted, you know the material well, you can likely use the process of elimination to scratch those out right away. Of the two remaining questions, there is then going to be a distractor and the correct answer. The distractor is designed to look like the right answer. However, there will be some clues either in the scenario or in the answer itself that to the trained eye, to the person who really understands the material, you will be able to figure out that this distractor is in fact not the correct answer, therefore leaving you with the correct answer. So know going into the exam that you're typically going to be able to eliminate two of the answers right away. You're then going to be left with the distractor and the correct answer. Then from the remaining two answers, you will need to use your analysis skills to figure out which one is the distractor and which one is the correct answer. Now I want to take a look at the three different types of questions that you're likely to see on the exam. The first type of question is the simple Q&A. And as the title suggests, this is a very straightforward question, followed by four possible answers. The example here, our question is, which of the following best describes the term edge case in the context of AI systems? A, a scenario that falls outside the normal range of inputs or conditions and may challenge the system's performance. B, a situation where an AI system operates in a typical and expected environment. C, an instance where the AI system is optimized to handle high-frequency and predictable tasks. Or D, a case where the AI system is explicitly designed to prioritize one group of inputs over others. Now, I'm not going to dive into the answer and the analysis here. I just wanted to provide you an example of what a simple Q&A question looks like. So again, we have a very straightforward question. It is asking a very specific question for a specific piece of information. And then you're going to choose from the available answers the best answer. The next type of question that you're likely to see is a scenario-based question. Now, with a scenario-based question, you're going to be given a description of some type of situation. And typically, at the end of that scenario is going to be a question that you need to answer using the available choices. And so here, our scenario is as follows. An AI analyst is collaborating with a data engineer to design a data set for training a new machine learning model. The analyst emphasizes that only the essential data required for the model's purpose should be collected and stored, avoiding any unnecessary information. They also suggest that once the data is no longer useful, it should be securely deleted. So that's our scenario. Our question then is, Based on this conversation, which FAIR information practice or FIP is being described? And our available answers are A, data minimization, B, notice and openness, C, access and individual participation, or D, use limitation. Again, not going to dive into the answer and the analysis here. I just wanted to provide you with an example of what a scenario-based question looks like. The final type of question that you're likely to encounter is a case study question. Now, case study questions are, number one, much longer. Number two, they are multi-parted. What I mean by multi-parted is that you're likely to have some type of story that you need to read and understand. And then following reading that scenario, that case study, you then need to answer multiple questions. So whereas a scenario-based question is based just on one scenario, a case study applies to two or more questions. And so let's look at an example of what that might look like on the exam. 
A large e-commerce company deployed an AI system to screen job applications and rank candidates for interviews. The system had been trained on historical hiring data which contained biases against certain demographic groups. Despite warnings from some employees about potential fairness issues, the company's leadership fully trusted the AI system, assuming its algorithmic precision would ensure impartial decisions. So this is our base scenario. Question number one. So this is building on the scenario that we just read. A whistleblower revealed that an AI system consistently scored candidates from underrepresented groups lower than others, leading to widespread criticism from the public. News outlets covered the story extensively, and customers began questioning the company's values. What type of harm does this consequence reflect? And of course, we would have four choices here, and from those choices, you would select the harm that this consequence best reflects. And so in this example, again, just a little bit of looking forward, we have our base scenario, and then we're going to have three questions that are based on this scenario. So this is question one. Question two is as follows. The biased hiring process prevented the company from hiring skilled candidates from diverse backgrounds. Over time, this weakened the company's talent pool, reduced its ability to innovate, and led to a decline in productivity and competitiveness. What type of harm does this consequence reflect? Finally, case study question three is as follows. Regulators launched an investigation into the company after complaints were filed about discriminatory hiring practices. The investigation found that the AI system violated anti-discrimination laws, resulting in significant fines and mandated changes to the hiring process. What type of harm does this consequence reflect? And so again, you're going to have one base scenario, and then you're going to have questions that build on that base scenario. You'll remember earlier we were talking about the examiner's mindset and how one of the objectives is to tax your cognitive load. That is done in part by requiring you to hold in your working memory a scenario that you then must apply to a number of different questions. And so this is the case study format of question that you're likely to see on the exam. I want to end this lecture with a note on my practice questions. So as you know, version 2.0 of the AIGP Certification Masterclass comes with 400 scenario-based practice questions. I want to make it very clear and set expectations from the start. The questions that you see on the actual exam will be harder than my questions. Seriously, let me say this a second time. Questions on the actual exam will be harder. No, really, for a third time to really drive this home, questions on the actual exam will be harder. The objective of these questions is to help you practice the four different levels of the Bloom's taxonomy that we looked at at the beginning of the skill studies section. I want you to practice all of the different skills that we're going over here. Not only Bloom's taxonomy, but the different tips that we're going to look at in the next lecture. If you struggle with my practice questions, you will also struggle, perhaps even more so, on the exam. With that said, if you are able to go through my practice questions with a lot of confidence, I think that's a good omen for what you can expect on the actual exam, even though the actual exam will be what? It will be harder. In this lecture, we went over the different question formats that you can expect to see on the exam. Again, all of the questions are going to be multiple choice, and there are three general categories of questions that you can expect to see. These are simple Q&A, scenario-based, and case study questions.